Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, it's with great pleasure, pleasure that I rise today to speak to the third reading of Building a Strong Ontario Act in support of our government and the Minister of Finance. We're building Ontario for today, tomorrow, and the next day by driving economic growth, lowering the cost of doing business, attracting new investments, and getting key infrastructures built faster. The Minister's sensible and measured plan will build an Ontario that the people of this province can be proud of, not only today, but in the future. And in the face of global economic uncertainty, we are building an Ontario that continues to have a resilient economy, an Ontario that is strong. And we're working for Ontarians. And I want to demonstrate how this bill will have a direct impact on the people of my riding of Thornhill, as well as the rest of this province, by taking you on another tour. Let's begin at one of the most famous delis in Thornhill. This is the Center Street Deli. I believe uh, some of you may be acquainted with Center Street Deli because uh, Nana uh, actually brought uh, the very famous smoked meat sandwiches to uh, the legislature and they actually sold out halfway through the event. And uh, it was pretty remarkable. And they're, they're actually located right beside the constituency office. So popular, you cannot get a parking spot at lunchtime uh, during certain times of the week uh, in my community. Uh, and they were founded over 35 years ago. It's a legacy that was continued by three dedicated employees who purchased from the original owner, uh, and Nana, Ganesh, and Kuna now, uh, now lead uh, the organization. But despite its popularity, popularity, the deli closes every day at 5 p.m. And I asked Nana, why don't you keep it open longer? And she, she advised she'd love to keep the restaurant open longer, but unfortunately, she's unable to for a couple of reasons, including a lack of available staff. It's a common issue that we hear across this province, which is why our government is enabling an estimated $8 billion in cost savings and support for eligible Ontario employers in 2023, making it easier for these small business people. And almost half of these savings and supports are going directly to small businesses like Nana's and Centre Street Deli. That includes expanding access to small business corporate income tax rate by increasing the phase-out range, and that would provide Ontario small businesses with an additional Ontario income tax relief of $265 million over the next few years. Our government is expanding the Ontario Bridge Training Program by an additional $3 million in the 2023-24 uh, year to help internationally train immigrants find employment in their fields and get faster access to training and supports towards a license or a certificate. More training and employment for immigrants means more staff who can help small businesses like employers like Nana. And with added cost savings measured and tax incentives, Nana will have the tools she needs to run her business effectively. I'm going to take another tour around the neighborhood, and I'm going to take everybody to the Holy Trinity Anglican Church, which is one of the oldest churches in my riding. It was actually founded in the 1830s. I've been there many times, and the Holy Trinity also functions as a homeless shelter with 25 beds as part of Blue Door Shelters, and I've had the opportunity to volunteer there and help and serve meals and hand out blankets. Madam Speaker, with this budget, we are investing an additional $202 million each year in the Homeless Prevention Program, an Indigenous Supportive Housing Program, to help those experiencing those at risk or homelessness and escaping intimate partner violence, which is a huge issue. These investments will support the community organizations delivering supportive housing. Those investments will help Holy Trinity. Let's move over to Henderson Avenue, where we've got a brand new school. It's uh, almost finished. I, I drove by it yesterday. Uh, literally, I'd say it's got uh, maybe a month more of work to do. And it's scheduled uh, to open for the students in September. This new school will ensure that more students at Thornhill have better access to education, and I cannot wait to see it in action and up and running. I sat on parent council for over a decade with my uh, local school, and I know how important this school is going to be to the community. Um, 
The passage of this bill will allow schools like this one to be best supported and prepare our children. This is because our budget outlines plans to invest $15 billion in capital grants over 10 years to expand and renew schools and help create 86,000 new childcare spaces by December 2026. And when I drove by that school the other day, I saw that new childcare space to the side. It, they're easily recognizable, and as somebody who's worked within the system, uh, it, was very, uh, it was a very joyous moment for me because I know when you've got new kids, You've got parents, you've got families moving in. It's good for the community. Um, and improving the education of our children and increasing childcare spaces helps our next generation have the best possible foundation for building their lives. And as a mother, I understand how important this is to parents all over Ontario. Parents, grandparents, and in, uh, in, in Thornhill we call them boobies and zadies. Uh, it's all good. We want to prepare our children for the jobs of the future, and, and we're setting them up for success. Um, and that includes dual credit opportunities in, in healthcare-related courses for an additional 1,400 secondary students, which I think is a, a marvelous incentive. Uh, it's a win-win for all the parties involved. The kids get exposure to this very important sector, and they're able to gain credits uh, for, their, uh, for their future. Uh, and Madam Speaker, many parents and grandparents uh, have approached me to talk about the fact that their children and grandchildren cannot study to become doctors close to home, which is why our government's plan also includes helping more Ontario students become doctors by adding more undergraduate and postgraduate uh, medical training seats right here in Ontario with the new medical schools in Scarborough and in Brampton. And we need these doctors. This is another great way of ensuring that Ontarians are able to get the health care they need and deserve. Madam Speaker, let us now drive over to the Improve Centre. It's farther west in my riding, closer to the highway. Uh, there's a not-for-profit called the Bata to Batapreneur, also known as B2B. Uh, they just graduated 40 students from their business workshop. Um, uh, you know, giving young adults Exposure to creating a plan for business is such an important thing. And um, our plan includes providing $2 million to the Futurepreneur Canada program, which helps young entrepreneurs grow their skills and achieve their business goals. More students will be able to nurture their interest in business and pursue successful careers in business according to our plan. Madam Speaker. Now, this will not only support the success of our young professionals, but it will also grow our economy. And I'm certain that their businesses, their future businesses, these seeds, these ideas, will provide invaluable contributions to our community. I always talk about Thornhill being a, a group of self-starters. You know, we, we start something from nothing. And it's with that generation, that seed that's handed out to these, uh, these students that allows them to, uh, to further uh, move in a direction that's positive, to create a small business. I actually um, just hired um, a student um, that I, I'm happy to say I graduated from elementary school. He's got his own landscaping business. That's what he's doing this summer. And he's becoming an initiative for his own future, which is so important. Okay, the tour is definitely not over. We're going to keep driving in our e-vehicle. And uh, let's go over to the west side uh, of Thornhill. Um, many folks uh, may not know this, but there's an area that's home to some top industry manufacturers who are looking to grow and expand right in Vaughan. And one of these is none other than the Give and Go Bakeries, who make these delicious two-bite brownies. And we're going to be providing uh, an Ontario-made manufacturing investment tax credit, which will provide a 10% refundable corporate tax uh, uh, investment or tax credit. Um, and we'll, we're going to be providing important initiatives so that they can turn that money and invest back into the workers and innovate and become more competitive, because we don't want to lose these businesses to the south. We are caring for our residents, and we are creating a stronger Ontario.